Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm very excited because I'm going to be sharing with all of you an updated version on how I make my concrete containers. Now I make them for planters and candles. I've been making soy candles for over seven years now. I used to make them in glass and tin. And once the shortage of containers started happening to me where I couldn't get them for a month or month and a half, I decided to start making my own containers and I decided to make them out of concrete. So I've been making concrete vessels for over a year now. I've definitely learned a lot of do's and don'ts. I have a lot of the same molds actually that I started with and I will share that with you too. And I'm gonna share with you updated tools that I've been using that are actually making it a lot easier to make these vessels. Now, if you're new to my channel, my name is Kayla. I make videos all about concrete, candles, and crafts. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to so you don't miss out on any of the new videos I post in the future. Let's go ahead and jump into this video because I am very excited to share with you all the tips that I've learned over the year and all the new stuff that I'm using. All right, so before we jump into the step-by-step -step on how I make these containers, I'm actually gonna show you from step one all the way until I pour the candle. So I wanted to show you a couple molds. This mold right here, I actually bought this a year and two months ago, um, back in October of 2020, and I still have it. <laughs> um, this is a, just an Amazon mold. Um, this one, a lot of people said they have issues with. Um, I will show you how I unmold it when I unmold it in my garage, but you basically just fold this down and you just get it over the lip. But these for me are my best sellers. I love the cylinder look and these molds are very durable. There are a lot of places you can buy molds. You can buy them on Amazon. Um, I know Modern Craft Labs have molds and a few other places. Me personally, I've gotten all of my molds off Amazon. I prefer Amazon because it's fast shipping. I don't have to wait for them and they're less expensive um, and they last a long time. So this is just one of them that I use and the other one I use is my oval mold. So this is my second mold that I bought at the beginning of all this and a lot of people said they have issues with this too so I just wanted to cover how to get this out. So when the concrete is in here, you just tip it. It's not gonna fall out like that. <laughs> so you just tip it like this and then you kind of just wiggle each side. And then this will fall out once you wiggle each side. Um, but this one I personally really like just because it's a different silicone material. It does put a smoother finish on your concrete than the other silicone mold. However, both of these I've had for a year and two months. Um, it all comes down to taking care of your molds. If you don't take care of your molds, they are gonna fall apart. Um, so what I would recommend is after every single use, wash them with soap and water and then let them dry. Never keep them inverted. So what I mean by that is always keep them like this when you're waiting to pour any mold in. Because if you keep it like this, these are fine. Uh, however, I have a ton of different molds right now and I've noticed that some of them, if you keep it like this, the heavier, uh, thicker ones, they will actually break right in the crease. <laughs> so I have had a couple of my molds break and that is because I left it inverted. But this one, this specific one and my cylinder, I actually have had for over a year. So I will put those links in the description box below in case all of you are interested on where I got those. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into my step-by-step -step of how I make the candles. I'm actually going to be using that oval mold I showed you, the cylinder mold, and I have a huge candle mold that I absolutely love. It holds 35 ounces of wax. My oval mold and my cylinder mold both hold 12 and nine. So I'm going to be showing you a few different sizes. We're also going to be doing a marbled color, a solid color, and then a natural color. That way we can just cover all bases and I can show you guys how I get the different colors. All right, so these are what I am using for my concrete now. So these are silicone mixing bowls. I got them off Amazon. The link is in the description box below. 
They come with three different sizes. And I have had these for about four months now and they are working awesome and I don't have to throw away a lot of the Solo Cups. Now the next thing you're gonna want are gloves and then a mask as well and then some water. I just use tap water or bottled water and then stirring sticks. Now I use the Solo Cup just to put the cement in but I don't actually mix the concrete in the cup itself. I have paper towels for cleanup and then these are measuring spoons for my pigment dyes that we'll be using to color the concrete. And these are my pigment dyes from Direct Colors. I buy it right on their website. And then you're also gonna want your mold. So this is the cylinder mold that holds nine ounces, the oval mold that holds 12, and the large mold that holds 35. Again, all bought on Amazon. So the consistency that you want to shoot for is pancake batter consistency. So not too runny, but you also don't want it too thick to where it's not going to fall into the mold nicely. So here I usually pour a little bit at a time and then I will slam the mold on the table and tap the sides to really get the concrete all in the crevices of the mold and make sure that all the air bubbles come up out of the concrete so that way you're not getting a bunch of air bubbles on the sides. All right, I really take my time here to make sure I get all the air bubbles out so it looks nice when we unmold it. And a tip that I will give when you're done with your bowl is just scrape all of the extra concrete out. And then I have a one of those orange five gallon buckets um, behind me and I just dump the extra in there. Um, and then once the concrete in the bowl dries a little bit, it will just crumble out. So the next mold we're going to do, I'm gonna use our medium silicone bowl. And this is the oval mold and it uses about one and a half of my Solo Cups. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour my concrete into the bowl. I'm doing a natural color, so we're actually not gonna be coloring this concrete. So once again, I'm going to add slowly and get a pancake batter like consistency. And I always stir quite a bit to get those air bubbles out before I pour it into the mold. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour, and remember I pour a little bit at first and then drop and tap 
to get those air bubbles out and then finish with some on top. So the next mold we're going to do is the cylinder mold and we're actually going to be marbling this one. So I'm going to be doing white in one bowl and then orange in another bowl mixing it with the red and gold direct color pigments that I have. So for the white I use titanium dioxide. So I'm going to pour my cement first and then we're going to go through and add the colors to the bowls. So this mold takes about one cup of concrete, so I split it in half. I am doing a little bit more white. This is the titanium dioxide that I add to the white bowl. And I usually do about one tablespoon. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mix our orange color. So this is the gold from Direct Colors. So I'm gonna do a little bit of gold. And then this is the red. And I'm gonna do a little bit of red as well. I do a little bit more gold than I do red. It did take me some time of mixing both of the colors to figure out what kind of shade I wanted and how I could duplicate that. But all you have to do is just test and try different colors and it'll come out the way that you eventually would like. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and add our water. Remembering the three part cement, one part water. So these, I don't have to add as much water because there's not as much concrete in the bowl. Now with the white, when I use titanium dioxide, I do need to add a little bit more water um, because that titanium dioxide really soaks up that water. With the pigment dyes, as I said before, sometimes I don't need to use as much. So I like to add slowly. All right, so now what we're gonna do is just pour the orange right into the white. So you don't want to completely mix these. You're only gonna to wanna to stir about two to three times and then go ahead and pour into the mold. With this specific mold, I recommend pouring a little, little bit at a time because the first initial pour, it does take a little bit of moving the mold around to get it down to the bottom. And then as you pour more, it'll be easier. For the concrete to move down. Now what you're going to want to do, I have the big one and the oval sitting to the side. I'm going to let all three of these set for at least two hours. I usually do between two and three hours. If you have to um, unmold it pretty quickly, I would say at least two hours just to allow it to become stronger. Once you demold these, you're gonna to wanna to let them set for a little bit of time before you seal them as well. And I'll go over that in a minute. Now, sometimes with these molds, you will get a little bit of concrete on the top. And if you do that, that's okay. You can go ahead and get one of these leveling tools and you can level that right out and make it flat and easier to sand. Again, we're gonna go ahead and let this set for two to three hours. All right, so we're ready to unmold the big one. You just have to unscrew these, remove the bottom and the sides, and then you'll be able to remove the actual silicone part. Now, this one is a little heavier, so setting it down on the table might be a little easier to get the mold off of the concrete. So 
So for this next mold, this one, a lot of people have said they were having issues. So I just put it upside down like this and I just have to wiggle the plastic part off and then the actual silicone part will come off. As you can see, it's a little bit still wet, so we need to let that dry before sealing. And then this mold, you just wanna roll down with your hands all the way down to the lip, pull it over that lip all the way around, and then it'll pop right off. So we're gonna let all three of these molds set for at least 24 hours before we go ahead and put the sealer on. So these have set for 24 hours. As you can see, all the wet spots have come off. Now we're gonna go ahead and sand these. So I use 80 sanding paper um, and I just cut them into little squares. And what you're gonna wanna do is I just sand the bottoms and you don't want any really sharp edges so that way if someone sets it on a counter or something, it's not gonna scratch. You just wanna make sure they're level. All right, so the next thing is a sealer. I use polycrylic, I get it from my local Home Depot. I do two coats on the inside of each of my containers and all of my containers, except for the large one, I do coat the outside as well. So you're just gonna want to use a foam brush and just get every single crevice um, inside and out. You can just do the inside if you'd like um, I do like kind of a satin finish on the outside of my vessels and I have the satin um, polycrylic. They do have a matte and a clear gloss as well. So when you're choosing a sealer, this is really just preference, um, but you definitely want to test your vessels. So I've been using polycrylic for over a year now and I absolutely love the way it works after every single candle is burned there is the sealer is still on the inside so it's not leaking into the candle and i really like putting on the outside of my candles because if for some reason wax drips on the outside of the container or um, you know it bumps up against something it protects against those scratches and the wax just wipes right off um, so it is really nice as far as a protective finish as well the other thing you're going to want to do is test it for heat so make sure when you are burning the candle and what type of wax you're using for example i use soy wax so it is very low in heat um, but if you're using a different type of wax or you know a different type of wick definitely make sure that you are testing the sealer before you go and sell your candles so here on the big one, I just do one on the inside, let it dry, and then do another one, and I also do the bottom. I've gotten a lot of compliments on this candle, but a lot of people said that they really like the soft concrete look on the outside of this big one. Uh, so I have actually decided to leave that matte look on this specific container. All right, so we are done with round one, so we just go through and do round two and then they will sit for another 24 hours and then we will go ahead and pour the candles in. Now with these times that I recommend, these are the minimum. Sometimes I have my candles set for multiple days, sometimes just the minimum, um, but I would recommend at least 24 hours. All right, so now time for candle making. These are all the supplies that you're going to need. I'm gonna go over them individually and I'll have them in the description box below.
All right, so I have my wax in the Presto Pot. I used 100% soy wax. I absolutely love this Presto Pot because it holds about 12 pounds of wax, and I can just use that wax to put in the little pouring pitchers and then fragrance them separately. So it does save a lot of time and it's really efficient. I did get this on Amazon and I do have it in my description box below. So I am now measuring out my large one. I'm going to be doing 32 ounces of wax and three ounces of fragrance oil. It's almost a 10% fragrance load. And then the second one we're gonna do is the oval. So for the oval, I do 11 ounces of wax and one ounce of fragrance oil. I'll have the formula in the description box of how you can get the correct amount of fragrance oil and wax. Now for the cylinder, I do eight ounces of wax and then I do just over 0.8 ounces of fragrance oil. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and check the temperatures to add the fragrance oil. Um, since I pour the wax into the containers at 180, I usually let it cool until about 160, 165, and then I add my fragrance oil. I always wanna make sure you zero out the scale and then add it in, and then I just stir with these little popsicle sticks. You definitely want to make sure you stir quite a bit to make sure that the fragrance oil binds with the wax. So once we've let them all cool, I pour anywhere between 125 and 135. You want to pour when it's not so hot and you wanna pour when it's sl slowly into the container. So that way there's no air bubbles. And if you pour it when it is not so hot, it actually will take less time to dry up and be ready to go in the container, which is good because if you have hot wax in the container and it takes too long to dry up, then you will actually get more of an encaving look. So you'll find like really big holes in the top. So if you do it this way, you'll get a nice smooth top. So I use these popsicle sticks to keep the wicks in the right spot while it's drying. You can reuse really anything. I've just found these to be really helpful and an inexpensive way to have wick holders. Now I usually let these set for a good few hours, um, especially the big one, before you cut the wicks. So these are wick cutters. I highly recommend them. It's a lot easier than using scissors or anything. So you wanna do, depending on your wick, you wanna make sure that it's not too long or too short. I do about a quarter of an inch. And these are what the final products look like. Thank you so much for watching my video and I hope this helped all of you. And I will see all of you in the next video.